Welcome to your weekly airplane news update. This is the week of February 8, 2021. I got four topics this week. One of them is a big one. This just came out. The NTSB came up with the final report for the Kobe Bryant accident. So we'll talk about that. Uh, I want to show you a picture of a very bizarre rudder failure. And that's all I'm going to say for right now. Uh, but even the NTSB is kind of scratching their head as to how this, uh, this happened. I want to talk about another uh, crash, unfortunately, but uh, this is something that we can all learn from. So that's the reason I mentioned these. Uh, but there's a citation crash where uh, the pilot actually wasn't rated at all. So we'll talk about that. And then I want to show you an ice training video or icing training video, I should say. Uh, really good information. And, uh, and, and I, want to, I want to share the link so you can go take a look at it. All right, let's get started. And the first thing this week is something that a lot of us have been waiting for a while, which is the NTSB report for the Kobe Bryant crash that happened almost a year ago now. And this came out on Tuesday. Uh, the FAA, the, the NTSB, the FAA doesn't get involved with this. The NTSB complete, c concluded that the crash that killed Kobe Bryant and eight other people was due to continue flying VFR into IMC. And, uh, and then it followed by spatial disorientation, which ended up in the crash. And when this happened, um, a lot of people were speculating. And, and this is something that I don't like doing because because I don't have access to all the information. And, uh, and I always like to wait for the NTSB report, which unfortunately takes a year typically to happen. And this is exactly what we're seeing here. And, um, and, and the speculation was mostly right from, from what most people were, were saying, which is um, they flew into IMC, they weren't really trained for it, or they weren't prepared for it maybe, or equipped for it, and then went into spatial disorientation, and then, and then hit the mountain. Very, very low altitude flying at this stage, uh, which was the condition. Uh, the, the report also mentions that there was some kind of induced pressure for the pilot to complete the flight due to who was on board and really having to get there. You know, the get their itis, which is the thing that we teach. And this is kind of what I want to get to where when I talk about these accident reports, I want to link it back to, uh, to, to the teaching part and to learning something from these accidents. So uh, another thing that the NTSB mentioned, which is kind of a, a very common thing in a way, it was the, the failure of the company to put a process in place to help the pilot make decisions. Basically what they said is that the pilot was kind of on his own to make a decision to go fly. Now you're going to say, well, he's the pilot in command. Yes, he was, but, uh, but the company also has somewhat of a duty to uh, create a path or to create um, a process to help the pilot make decisions. So with that being said, the NTSB out of this always has recommendations when there's an accident, especially uh, a high visibility accident like this. They recommend that helicopter pilots get uh, better simulator training uh, to talk about inadvertent IMC encounters. And this is important. In the airplane training world, we do a lot of this and we teach private pilots what to do if you're in IMC conditions, get out of it as quickly as you can. Uh, if we look back at what we talked about last week when we talked about the, uh, the Garmin emergency auto landing, that was one of the, the great thing about this is if you get into a, a situation where you're into IMC, then you can just push that button and then, uh, and then the airplane would take you home safely. Doesn't mean that you obviously need to get into those conditions, but that's uh, kind of beyond the point here. The NTSB is also recommending that uh, the, the turbine helicopter, which this was one of them, Sikorsky uh, helicopter, get equipped with digital flight data recorders and cockpit voice recorders uh, so that I guess they can collect more information uh, at the end of it to find out exactly what happened. So the weather, interestingly, was marginal, not great, but not to the point where the flight should have been canceled uh, at the time of departure. So what happened is that they got into a condition where there is a low marine layer and they entered that layer and then the pilot initiated a, a kind of a quick left turn to apparently get out of it and then lost control and then crashed into the hillside. So um, I'm going to put a link down here to an article and where you can see more information about this. Um, I hate to say this is fascinating because that's kind of the wrong word, but this is something that we all need to learn from. We know every year people die from getting into uh, IMC and either not being rated for it, not being ready for it, not being trained for it. So this should all be a reminder for all of us to know our limits, to know 
uh, that you're getting to the point where this could be dangerous and, and it's time to just cancel the flight and not do it. So know your own limits is kind of the, the bottom line here. Okay, move on to the next thing. Uh, this was a very bizarre failure and this happened in Alaska. This happened last summer in June in Alaska and uh, this uh, flight instructor and a student, private pilot, they were actually practicing float landings uh, apparently on the lake and then after one of the takeoff they realized all of a sudden that the aircraft kind of became not uncontrollable but very difficult to control with a very heavy yaw to the right and then the aircraft started to climb. And uh, so the instructor took over the controls, went back to the airport, decided not to land in the lake, and then found this picture right here of the rudder. So what had happened is that the rudder had completely detached from the stabilizer and then had flopped over to the left. And when it did that, what it did is it was creating obviously a lot of right yaw because of that. And because of the, the, the horizontal surface that was now created, it looks like it created some additional lift, which, which was uh, creating the... Uh, the, the nose up moment, if you want, uh, from that. So the NTSB is kind of scratching their head as to how this happened. It just looks like it kind of melted on the side. Just a very weird thing. I've actually never seen anything like it uh, out there. So just, you know, kind of something interesting. You, you never know what's going to happen. You always need to be ready for something. Obviously, the pilot and the instructor did uh, the right thing and, and kind of, you know, brought the airplane back safely and uh, then realized what had happened. The next thing I want to mention is this uh, citation crash, which happened, uh, I want to say it happened this week or, or earlier the week before. And um, this was a Citation 560, uh, Cessna Citation jet, crashed in Oregon. And uh, the, 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 the situation is odd, okay? Uh, the aircraft spiraled down from uh, 31,000 feet all the way down into a, a mountainous area in the middle of nowhere and, and basically just nothing left of the aircraft as you can expect. I think the, the report said that the aircraft went down for eight consecutive minutes just going down and finally hitting down on the ground. So the NTSB preliminary report looked into the pilot qualification and they said that uh, he didn't have a type rating and uh, that killed two people, by the way, the, the pilot and a passenger. And, uh, and he actually had recently failed the training at a training facility in Arizona and where they decided that he wasn't proficient enough to give him his type rating. And then he decided to go on and fly anyway. So it looks like he owned the aircraft. Um, he was given multiple warnings during the flight about being off course and about being at the wrong altitude, uh, flying very close to uh, Mount Hood in, in Oregon. And, um, and then eventually just went down. So there's been a lot of speculation about what happened to this. I don't really want to get into the speculation because I, I don't have any proof about what exactly happened, but um, it, just a very odd accident, uh, which we see happening once in a while. But uh, the bottom line, regardless of the reason why it happened, the bottom line is fly an airplane that you qualified for, okay? And uh, and sometimes a large airplane is a lot to handle, especially a jet. And uh, if you just don't have the qualification, don't go and just fly it anyway, obviously. So um, that's it. That's all I'm gonna mention for this. If you wanna do more research, uh, there's a, an article down here and, uh, and there's a lot more information about available about this, but uh, I, I wanna keep this as informational as possible. Okay. The next thing I want to talk about is, uh, again, kind of related to training because this is the reason for uh, this show. Um, this is an icing training video and it's not new, but I figured this would be actually a good reminder because, well, it's this is the middle of winter and, uh, and we've just had quite a bit of snow across the country and, uh, and icing conditions and conditions that are not always favorable for flying. So the Air Safety Institute puts out these great videos training kind of a, a learning uh, environment for making sure you don't make the same mistakes. And this pilot is taking off and then now I forgot in which state he was. I want to say he was in Michigan, but I actually, uh, I should have, I should have written that down, but, uh, took off, got into some severe icing conditions to the point where the windshield was completely covered with ice and, uh, and still managed to make it to the end. So this is a, this is a good story. There's no crash. Nobody died in this one, but somebody was extremely lucky. I can tell you that I looked at this and then, and then I started looking at a bunch of comments and everybody was like, wow, you are one lucky person, uh, to make, to make, make it out alive out of this thing. So, um, again, this is kind of a, a learning situation here where we can learn that if we get into these conditions, don't get the 
get their itis. Don't get the, I need to get to my destination. Go somewhere else, declare an emergency, get the help that you need, land safely, and then talk about it in front you know, of your friends uh, instead of uh, becoming a statistic. So, okay, that's all I have for this week. As always, like, comment, subscribe, do everything you do. If you guys are interested in drones, we also have a drone news update that we do on a weekly basis uh, published at the same time. We have a drone channel called Pilot Institute. We have an airplane channel, which is this one called Pilot Institute Airplane. Uh, and we're adding more content to this channel. So uh, if you want to get notified, just click on the subscribe uh, button right here and then you'll get all the notifications when we add new videos. So that's it. That's all I have for you this week. I will uh, see you next week again and uh, you fly safe.